Okay. Um, what what I want you to do right now is to get into Microsoft Excel. And I'll help you to set up this spreadsheet I'll talk you through. Some of you are going to know more about this than I am. I understand it. Uh, but uh, what we're going to do is we're going to go through and, uh, and process the data. And we'll see. Okay. Um, the way to do that is to go to all for our two uh, programs. All programs. All for soft. Microsoft, Microsoft Applications, I'm going to go to Microsoft Office, Microsoft Excel. Yeah. Bring up Excel. I'm going to bring the screen now. Start setting up the spreadsheet. Yeah. Oh my God. Anyone has any questions? Let me know. She's doing that. She's doing this. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> well, if you all want to, it'd be cool. Okay, now, the winning, um, again, what we're going to do is um, we're trying to see who comes closest to the red. Um, to enter sine theta right here, for me it's in cell F5, sine uh, theta, I'm going to have to insert that. I'm going to go up here to insert. Come over here to the right where it says symbol. I see one of the kids over here already has this done. And it's under basic Greek somewhere. Um, so what I'm going to do is look for it. You're reading the basic read. Under subset, yeah. Brief and cop. There's close enough. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to get through. Um, let's see. These in nanometers, the wavelength symbol. What did you get for the red line? 33. 
33. What do you get for blue green? 24. 24. And for the blue? 21. 21. Okay, thank you. Okay, so what I want you to do is get to the point you've entered your x values and your y values, and I'll talk to you about how we'll do the calculations. So get everything set up, and if you have questions, call me. Before I help you out. Like I said, some of you guys, these guys don't worry about you. <laughs> I think over there, it just goes to confess my ignorance. How many of you have used Microsoft Excel before? How many have never used it before? Anybody? A couple of you may never have used it. All right. What uh, Microsoft Excel is, it's a spreadsheet function which allows us to do calculations and to do multiple calculations very easily. We're going to do a very simple one today. I do this activity with my classes because I want my students to understand that no matter what you do in this world nowadays, chances are you're going to beat out on a PC somewhere. Even the guy that fixes my car when I smash it has a PC on his desk. And um, I want them to have a little bit of confidence and some experience with a little bit of confidence that they can deal with, they can do, do it. And the beauty of an Excel spreadsheet, the beauty of a spreadsheet, is that it allows us to do repetitive and multiple calculations easily. And what we're doing is we're programming within these areas of the spreadsheet called cells. Cells are designated by a letter and a number. This location right here, which is underneath for me the Z, and I don't know which one it is for you, it can be different, it doesn't matter, but for me that is cell E6. And that's where I'm going to put my first calculation. Another thing you've got to be aware of is anytime you put a number in the cells of a spreadsheet, you cannot put the units on the number itself. Make sure you do not write, type in centimeters next to any of these numbers. The reason being is that when you put a number into a cell a spreadsheet, the computer knows that's a value and it can do calculations with it. If you put units on it, it thinks it's a label and it doesn't know how to do calculations if there's words or labels in there. And so you don't want any units there. Notice I've got the units here at the top. Now, here's how I'm going to do this. I'm going to go to this cell right here underneath the Z, lining up with the red. But for me, that is cell E6 again. I'm going to tell the computer to do a calculation. To do that, those of you who have got some experience with Excel, what do you type first if you're going to do a calculation? Equals. Equals. You're going to type the equal symbol. When you type equals, what you're doing is you're telling the computer whatever happens next is a calculation. Now, take a look at your notes from when we were in the, in the, in the lab there. For, is that for me? May it will be. Um, when we're in the lab there, Z was equal to what? What did we say it was? How did we calculate it? Remember that case by thing right here? Square root of x squared plus y squared. Square root of x squared plus y squared. Okay, here's how you do that. You type square root, S-Q-R-T, is the abbreviation for square root. And then you type the left parenthesis, because what we're going to do is we're going to square the values that we're going to put in there. So, I go to that cell in my spreadsheet, I type equals, SQRT, left parenthesis. Now, for me, and I don't know where it is in your cell, my X values are here. It's in cell C6. So I'm going to tell the computer, square root of C6, and then I want to square that. To square it, I'm going to use the caret key, which is above the 6 on the number pad, or on the number, it's across the top. 2. Yours may be different, so make sure you use the right one for you. Shift 2. That squares that. And then I'm going to hit plus. The y squared is in d6. d6, shift 2. Plus d6. Good. Shift two. Here at two. And then I'm going to close the parenthesis. When I calculated it with your data, I get 105.3043. 105.3043, and I do that. 
Just do that once. For the other two, we're going to use the magic of the spreadsheet for the calculation for you. Okay, make sure you can get it. If you have any trouble, call me over. I'll help you out. Is everybody good? Okay, right there. for each of those three cells. That's the magic of the spreadsheet or the utility of the spreadsheet. Go up there. Okay, type, go up there. Type equals. C6. Or for you, it's yeah, C6. Here at 2. Plus. Plus. D6. Here at 2. Close parentheses. Okay, what are we doing? Let's do the fraction. That's not right. Come back up to it. Okay, you've got something. Okay, go out here. Type SQRT. No, you're right there. Okay, you got to do that way. So it won't do it. We'll take it. Now, left parenthesis. Did you got which one? Oh, don't. Go back there. Okay, put a left parenthesis. Put parenthesis around this stuff in the center. You need the Okay. The utility of spreadsheet is you don't have to repeat the calculation. I can right click on that, drag it. Oops. Left click on it, drag it. And it'll do the calculation each time. Now, the next calculation is the sine of theta. The sine of theta is equal to, what do we say it was? What's your notes say? Y over Z. Y over Z. Okay, now I'm going to show you another application of a spreadsheet this time. Another thing you can do with it. This is what we in our notes say it's equal to. What we're going to do is I'm going to go to the appropriate cell for me, and for me that's F6, it's right here. The thing I'm going to type when I get there is I'm going to type equals. And then I'm going to take the y and the z. And this time, instead of typing in the d6 divided by e6, I'm going to, count, I'm going to click on those cells to enter them. So I'm going to type equals. And then, is it x over z? Or y over z? It's opposite over hypotenuse. It's x over z. And then you start typing equal. Hold on. Check yourself on that. Should be x over z is what it was, right? So I said I thought you said. Okay, equals. Can everybody look up here? C seven. That's why. Okay, equals. My x value is here. I click it. It automatically puts it in. The division symbol is above the eight over on the number pad. I put that in. And then my z value, I click it. And then I hit enter. There enters the sign of paper. Go ahead and do that. Make sure you can get that to work. Then just fill it down again, just like you did for the all set. This one is just a division. It's divided by C. This name is cell, divide by, and then name that cell. 
I'm sorry. That's all right. Okay. So, so your F cell is um, then fill it down. C7. Probably print to the main printer. Okay, everybody, listen up. Is everybody call out. We've got some values for the sine of theta. Are we good? Yes. All right. Okay, come over to this one here. We're going to calculate the wavelength now, and we're going to calculate two ways. First, is we're going to calculate it in centimeters. The equation for this. Is the wavelength is equal to something called d times the sine of theta. <coughs> okay, we already have the sine of theta. We just calculated that. Now what we need is we need some value for d. And what that is, I calculated it's 1.87 by 10 to the minus 4. Now here's the problem. That's in scientific notation. And that's in centimeters. 1.87 by 10 to the minus 4 centimeters. Remember when I drew the illustration of the board where I had the pilings in the lake? That's how far the pilings are apart. And that's 1.87 by 10 to the minus 4 centimeters. That's 0 0.000187, 0, 0, 0.1874 centimeters. That's tiny. And that's how the, the diffraction grading is made by taking a laser. And what they do is they etch uh, an aluminum block. And then they pour the plastic on it. And they make the grading that way. And so it's very made very precisely. There's a very small distance between the lines, and that allows us to see the light broken into its individual wavelengths. Now what we're going to do is we're going to use something, this is called the Bragg equation, and this comes from x-ray diffraction. We're going to take that angle, we're going to multiply it by that d. What I'm going to type into the computer, and this is how you're going to do this, we're going to put that number in scientific notation, there's a little trick to it. You type 1 equals, first, 1.87, and then e negative 4. To multiply, use the asterisk symbol. And then for me, for sine theta, that's going to be cell what? Uh, F7. Now, when that comes up, there's going to be a little problem. Because I have one of my factors in scientific notation. This beast is going to come up in scientific notation. And it's going to look weird to you. Watch what happens when I do it. So everybody watch up here for a second. And I'm going to show you how to fix it. I'm having you do something that's probably a little more technical than you're used to, and that's okay. Type equals, I'm going to go 1.87, e, negative 4. Then I'm going to hit the asterisk symbol for the multiply, and then I'm going to click the cell. There's my F6. There's the formula, enter. Now watch what happens when I hit enter. It comes up in scientific notation. If it does not come up in scientific notation, we may need to format that cell. I'll help you do that. So go ahead and try that, and then fill it down. something that looks really weird, doesn't even have numbers there? Anybody have that happen to them? Good. All right, the last calculation. In a moment, we will know who the winner is of the calculator. Jeez. I'm not going to calculate the percent error and all that. We'll do is we'll just do it by straight difference in this second. Okay, now, the last calculation is to convert this wavelength to something called nanometers. Now, one nanometer is, it's a, it's a million, one million of a um, meter. 
So it's 10 to the minus 6 meters, or 10 to the 6 nanometers is equal to 1 meter. Here's what I'm going to do. I want to work the calculation out. I'll show you what you put into your spreadsheet to calculate. What we have here for me, I've got 5.86 times 10 to the minus 5 centimeters. What I need to do is I need to convert that into nanometers. I'm going to work here. Minus nine, that's a million. Micro, micro is micro. Yeah, that's what it is. Thank you for correcting me. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go to meters first, then I'm going to cancel meters and end up with nanometers. What I'm going to do is I'm going to fix this. Watch one meter, one meter. There's a hundred centimeters in a meter. There's ten to the nine nanometers in one meter. This is ten to the second. So I'm going to multiply by 10 to the, okay, everybody look up here for a second. I'll show you what I'm doing. I want to convert everything into nanometers. In order to do so, I want to cancel centimeters. I'm going to go to meters first. Then I'm going to cancel meters and go to nanometers. It should be common knowledge that there's 100 centimeters in a meter. 100 is 10 to the second. I was corrected now. There's 10 to the 9th nanometers in one meter. If I have 10 to the 9th divided by 10 to the 2nd, what do you do with the exponents here? Subtract them. Subtract them. What does that come out to be? 10 to the 7th. Okay. What we're going to do is we're going to take whatever value we have in this cell, and we're going to multiply by 10 to the 7th to get to this cell. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to this cell, I'm going to type equals 1 e7, and then I'm going to multiply by the value in that cell. And this one might come up weird. We'll see. I've got uh, 586 nanometers. What? Wait, is 1 e7? Why is it not here? Why is it not going by the cell numbers? You did the other part first. I did the other part first. If you want to, you can take the cell number first. But if you look at my calculation, I've got 1e7 times g6. Okay. Do you guys, did you get 586? Okay. 586. Let's see who's closest to. Uh, 656 is the accepted answer. Came up with a red line. What do you get? 650.44. 650.44. Anybody else? 613. What do you guys got? What do you get for it? 6 what? 665. 656 accepted, so 654 sounds like the winner. 650. 650. And you got 6 what? 65. 650, 665. Who's closer at that point? 6. 6. They are, yeah. 6, yeah. Okay. I only have two of these. I should have ordered more. I'll let you figure out who within your table did some. Congratulations. Okay. What you've done. You've done something that involves chemistry and physics, something that has historical significance and applies to atomic theory. Uh, thank you all for coming. Um, you don't have to print these things. We don't have the ability to print or anything like that. I hope you learned something today. I hope you had some fun. Uh, this afternoon at 1.40, I'm doing a session on something called thin layer chromatography, a crime scene investigation type thing. So take care. Have a great day, everybody.